Question 9-3 is honestly more of a unit 6 question than it is a unit 4 question, but what the heck, we need to practice. So we've got a diver here. Uh, we should, three figures are shown, three stages of a dive performed by an athlete. During the dive, the athlete completes several rotations in midair while traveling from the platform to the surface of the water. Figure one shows the athlete just after jumping off the platform. Figure two shows the athlete rotating in midair. And figure three shows the athlete about to enter the water. So part A, we're going to go right into our paragraph. Um, explain why the athlete's angular speed increases between figure one and two and decreases between figure two and three. So this is a conservation of angular momentum question, actually. So here's what I wrote. I wrote, once the diver leaves the board and until he hits the water, there are no external torques on him. So his angular momentum is, con is constant, okay? And then I also said that since angular momentum is moment of inertia or rotational inertia times um, angular speed, um, I said that his angular speed just depends inversely on his moment of inertia. So either one goes up and the other goes down or vice versa. So between station figures one and two, the diver brings his mass in towards the axis of rotation. So between one and two, this decreases his moment of inertia, which increases his angular speed. Now, between two and three, he extends his arms out, which means his rotational inertia is going to increase, which means his angular speed is going to decrease. So five points were possible for this. Uh, one point for indicating that the angular momentum is conserved, right? One point for reasoning why his angular momentum is less, is, is less at point two and more at point three. One point, actually that's just one point there. <laughs> one point for indicating that moment of inertia and angular speed are inversely proportional, one point for addressing both intervals, and one point for a logical relevant paragraph. So five points for the paragraph, which is point part A. Now part B asks us to address rotational kinetic energy and to, let's see, what are our three choices here? It's uh, two is larger than one, uh, two is less than one, or two is equal to one. So it's just between uh, figure one and figure two. So let me start with the answer. The answer is that the rotational kinetic energy is larger at figure two than it is in figure one. And here's why, okay? So we have the angular momentum, which is constant, right? So that means if moment of inertia doubles, angular speed is cut in half. The factor is the same. However, rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. So while angular momentum relies equally on moment of inertia and angular speed, rotational kinetic energy pays a lot more attention to angular speed because it's squared. So we want the position where the angular speed is at its maximum and that is point two. So here's what I said. I said at point one, his, his rotational inertia is large, his angular speed is small. Um, at, oh, sorry, that was at point one. At point two, his moment is small, his speed is large, and then I said, uh, you know, the, the factor is linear, it's a linear relationship here, but rotational kinetic energy depends more on omega than I. So the case where he has the greater omega wins, and that is case two. So two points for that argument. Um, one point for saying that from one to two, there's an increase in omega and decrease in I, and one point for reason, reasoning either qualitatively or quantitatively. Um, so you could use that numbers or not, um, that the decrease in moment of inertia doesn't compensate for the increase in angular speed. So two points for that little extra add-on to the paragraph.